It's a great joy for me to welcome you to the cathedral today, the lay faithful, religious deacons and priests who are not only here physically present, but to all those who are following this chrism mass from a distance via the live streaming. The chrism mass is a special sign of the unity of the local diocesan church with the presbyterate together with the diaconate, religious, and lay faithful gathered around the bishop. Obviously, the restrictions of the pandemic have meant, meant though that pure priests can be present than would normally have been the case. Today, therefore, gathered in the cathedral are the deans or their representatives from the various regions of our diocese. And after mass, they will carry the blessed oils and sacred chrism back to be received in the parishes of their deaneries. Present too are deacons, representatives from religious congregations, and members of the lay faithful from parishes and those who serve in the diocesan curia. I offer this mass for our priests, especially those who are celebrating their jubilees of ordination this year, and for all the faithful of this diocese, with a special intention for healthcare workers, for those who are sick or those in danger of death. And we pray for those in our communities who have died during this past year, and for families and friends who are grieving the loss of a loved one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor for the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. In our celebration of the Chrism Mass today, we will be using the ancient and normative order for the blessing of the holy oils and the consecration of the sacred chrism. The oils will be blessed within the Eucharistic prayer and the communion rite. In the early centuries of the church, apart from the bread and wine to be used for the Mass. Products such as water, milk, grapes, honey and oil were brought forward, not just part of the offertory procession, but also for blessing after the consecration in the Eucharistic prayer. And although this practice still continues in many of the Eastern rites of the Church, All that survives in the Roman rite is the blessing of the oil of the sick just before the end of the Eucharistic prayer. And the blessing of the oil of catechumens and the consecration of the sacred chrism just after communion. Though the tradition of blessing things during the Eucharistic prayer has therefore almost disappeared in our Western liturgy. It's perhaps only this practice that helps us understand the words which we still pray at the conclusion of the Roman canon of the Mass. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. All these good things with the oil and the other produce brought for the blessing. And this reminds us that as well as the bread and wine, clergy, the faithful, are themselves to be gifts offered to God in the Eucharistic prayer for transformation by him into the body of Christ, the church. In the first reading, we heard the words of the prophet Isaiah as he spoke to the Jewish people. 
but you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. Now the prophet was not only addressing the priests of the Old Testament, the descendants of Aaron, he was speaking to all of God's people. So when the church proclaims this same word of God in today's liturgy, God is speaking to each one of us. You will be named priests of the Lord. Because through our baptism and our confirmation, we all share in the royal priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in these sacraments, we are all anointed with the sacred oils. We are set aside, consecrated, and dedicated for the work of God. And this is why the first of the two important moments in the Chrism Mass is the blessing of the oils, oils that will be used throughout the coming year in our local church for the consecration and healing of all the people of God. The holy oils are, as it were, the bookends of our Christian life. As we die with Christ and are spiritually reborn with him in baptism, we are anointed with holy oils. And as we approach the hour of our physical death with the hope of eternal life, we are anointed with another oil. The oil of catechumens welcomes us as a child of God and strengthens us as a member of his family at our baptism. And so too, the anointing with the oil of chrism at our baptism consecrates us as members of Christ's royal priesthood. In our confirmation, the anointing with chrism consecrates us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, empowering us to give witness to Christ in the world throughout our lives. And the oil of the sick brings us God's love and mercy and comforts us spiritually when we are sick or in danger of death. Now through the laying on of hands and the prayer of consecration in the sacrament of holy orders, deacons, priests and bishops are set aside within the church to minister to the priesthood of all the faithful. At ordination for priestly service, the hands are anointed with oil to sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. At ordination for Episcopal service, the head is anointed with oil, holy oil to share the high priesthood of Christ. So as we acknowledge the distinctiveness of these ministries within the church, the sacred oils are nevertheless a sign of the sacramental unity of the clergy and the lay faithful in the one person of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. The three oils, therefore, which I will bless and consecrate during this Mass, the three signs of divine grace and draw their effectiveness from Christ himself and particularly from the paschal mystery of his death and resurrection. And this is the reason that the church normally celebrates this rite on the threshold of the sacred triduum in Holy Week. The second of the two important moments in this Chrism Mass, and one which is a relatively new one in the church's liturgical history, it was introduced by Pope St. Paul VI after the Second Vatican Council, is the renewal of the promises made by the priests on the day of their ordination. Now, for each priest, it's easier in some years than it is in others to renew their priestly promises at the Chrism Mass. By this I mean that the lives of few priests pass without experiencing some years of spiritual struggle. I remember some years attending a chrism mass and worrying about the integrity 
of what I was saying. But the Lord is with us in those moments. And without doubt, this past year has been a difficult time for all the church and indeed for society throughout the whole world. But it has also been a uniquely painful way of the cross I know for most priests. For at the center of a priest's life and ministry is the instinct and the desire to be personally present with the people in the communities that they serve. Not just spiritually, through prayer, but in an immediate way through the physical celebration of the sacraments with them. This is what being a good priest means, to have a heart after Christ's own heart, a heart that feels compassion, a shepherd who desires to be close to his flock. Our Holy Father Pope Francis expressed this in an address he gave to priests. He said, Christ loves and knows his sheep. He gives his life for them, and no one is a stranger to him. His flock is his family and his life. So it is also with the priest of Christ. He is anointed for his people, not to choose his own projects, but to be close to the real men and women whom God has entrusted to him. No one is excluded from his heart, his prayers, or his smile. With a father's loving gaze and heart, he welcomes and includes everyone. He stands apart from no one. Now, all of us have struggled with these restrictions. I just look around this cathedral. I see the little sisters of the poor who've had to struggle to minister to the elderly poor in their care in new and undifficult ways. I see the Franciscan sisters and brothers who have tried to minister to the poor in difficult ways as well. To the other religious in their apostolates, Jack Hinsley Hall, the curia. We've all of us had to try to adapt our lives and our ministry and our way of working in these difficult circumstances. But I know, my dear brother priests, how much these restrictions has brought many of us frustration and have been the cause of unsettlement in our priestly life, both spiritually and emotionally. We have had to work hard at finding different ways of trying to care for our people in very challenging circumstances. But it's often in struggles such as these that our Lord sometimes blesses us with special moments of insight into his will and, of course, into ourselves. There are moments which summon us to a deeper conversion of life and a more intense spiritual renewal. We do not choose the times in which we live that we do choose the way in which we live in those times. If we see them as a share in Christ's passion, they can become moments of time which invite us to rediscover the sacred heart of the Good Shepherd, a heart which is full of joy. As Pope Francis said, the joy of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is not a joy for himself alone, but a joy for others and with others, the true joy of love. This is also the joy of the priest. He is changed by the mercy that he freely gives. In prayer, he discovers God's consolation and realizes that nothing is more powerful than his love. He thus experiences inner peace and is happy to be a channel of mercy, to bring men and women closer to the heart of God. Sadness for him is not the norm, but only a step along the way. 
harshness is foreign to him because he is a shepherd after the meek heart of God. Conversion and renewal are important for every Christian, but they are crucial for us as priests and bishops because our vocation calls us to have hearts burning with the love of a father and a brother for all of God's people. What a priest is and has in his heart, in his inmost conviction and dedication, will put a stamp on every thought, word, and deed in his ministry. If we're to radiate the good news of the gospel, the good news must first radiate in our own hearts and lives. If we're to be compassionate shepherds of God's people, our hearts must first learn to beat with the rhythm of the heartbeat of Christ, which is tenderness and mercy. My dear brothers, priests, deacons, religious and lay faithful, as we seek to serve and rebuild our communities in the testing times that still lay ahead of us, I pray that the Lord will bless every one of us in our ministry and in our loving service to God's people. May the intercession of the most glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Mother of unfailing help, inflame our hearts with the compassion of her Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which, prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites? and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ, the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Amen. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen.
Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The oil of Capricumin. Thanks be to God.
wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before your children the Paschal banquet to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with a word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, and they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm 
in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. O God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your Holy blessing. Everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life, and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God, the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil. May those who are signed with it outwardly be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning, you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve the sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days of all, this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil makes our faces cheerful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son. 
and you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism and with it, you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created that is a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity, be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit. And may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the dance is ended. Thanks be to God.